I can start. Um, I'm Kayla Kutsky. I'm Daniel Williamson. I'm Ryan Peterson. Minnesota 4-H Science of Agriculture response team from Meeker County that designed a method to retrofit a round bill feeder. And we are no longer fed, fed up. up. Oh, I'm Ryan Peterson. This is Kayla Kutsky and Daniel Williamson. We are members of the Danielson Hustlers 4-H club in Meeker County. We are here today to present our Science of Agriculture response to the issue of feed waste. Through the engineering design process, we have researched and taken action on the issue of feed waste. Fed, fed up. up. We are fed up with the amount of feed our animals waste. We are fed up with the money we lose on wasted hay. So what are we going to do about it? Through brainstorming as a team, we determined the biggest uh, challenge all of us face on our farm was feed wasted by our cattle. On November 30th, 2014, we met as a team and talked about the agricultural challenge as we face on our farms. We invited Russ Peterson and Mike Kutsky. They are both diversified livestock farmers and are employed at Ridgewire Community and Technical College. Russ is an agriculture instructor. Mike is the Dean of Instruction. We want feedback to more clearly define our problem. We divided up our research responsibilities. Daniel researched digestive systems, I researched grain waste, and Kayla researched hay waste. All three of us observed and collected data of our animals eating. We took into the account of the environment, areas they eat, and what type of animal they were. Through research, we figured out that hay feeders were a main cause of hay loss. According to Dr. Justin Sexton, average quality grass hay is worth $100 per ton. A 30% savings will equal what producers paid for hay in past years. Selecting a feeder or feeding system designed to conserve hay can reduce the cost. Oklahoma State University News and Views authors Robert Wells and David Lawman created the following scenario. A producer with 30 cows will feed 180 bales of hay, weighing 1,200 pounds, 1,200, 1200 pounds each in a six-month period. They valued the hay at $70 per bale. In their example, the cattle would waste anywhere from $667.80 to $2,646 worth of, worth of hay. This is depending on the type of feeder that they have. Research like the information from Robert Wells and David Lawman led us to define the problem in our challenge. We began to collect more research on hay loss studies and about, uh, and about and the amount of hay loss on our own farms. For the discussion as a, on our team with Danelle Williamson, a diversified livestock and crop farmer, we decided to focus on hay loss prevention. We felt like it was something most crop farmer livestock farmers have have in common so and could make the biggest impact in livestock feeding we determined we would measure the hay loss on our own farms so you're probably wondering why hay waste between our three farms we have beef cattle horses goats sheep and other small animals we wanted to figure out a way for the most livestock producers to save money on their hay waste and hay is the most common feed source 
To begin our research in this issue, we looked at how cattle digest feed, the cost of hay, and the amount of hay loss with each type of feeder. We looked at a variety of hay research studies, and we narrowed it down to four main studies. These were from the University of Missouri, Oklahoma State University, Michigan State University, and the University of Arkansas. As you can see from this data chart, comparing the hay loss in the studies, the percent of hay loss from ring round bale feeders ranged from 5.4% to 13%, and the average percent was 9.375. This research lets us more clearly define the problem. How do we prevent livestock from wasting hay through inefficient feeders? Once we knew what we wanted to change to the feeder, we then researched different types of feeders. We also talked to our mentors to get feedback on our ideas. We got feedback from livestock producers and industry representatives. We researched animal behavior by collecting the animal data from our animals on our own farm. We w observed them eating and recorded a video. If an animal can take their head out of the feeder, they will. If their head is out of the feeder, they will drop hay. And if the hay is stepped on, slobbered on, or gets dirty, the animal will not eat it. From this research and our observations, we knew that to limit the amount of waste, we needed to limit the amount of movement of the head of the animal. We made several design attempts on paper before deciding which elements would prevent head movement. We utilize all components of the engineering process as shown in our portfolio. And we'll hand them out to you. Kayla will. Okay. We started the prototype design by presenting our sketches to Nell Williamson. He reviewed models of us. He didn't discourage us, but encouraged us to look at different elements of design. We decided on a basic design and determined what we needed for supplies. Originally, we wanted to build a prototype from scratch, but we quickly realized that this would be too expensive. It would also be too expensive for most farmers to build or buy new. Our solution combined two of the existing feeders together, the keyhole and chains. Chains were added to the existing feeder to create a deeper V at the bottom of the feeder. We used chain because it would make the space smaller so the animal wouldn't pull their head out. And since the chain moves, the animal can still get their head in and out of the feeder easily. As you can see on our feeder, there's two openings that are created by a diagonal chain. The larger opening is used for cattle and larger ewes. This deep V causes them to leave their head towards the bottom of the feeder because it takes more energy to lift their heads up and back out of the feeder in order to drop hay. And the smaller triangle is used for goats and other sheep. And this small space discourages them from constantly removing their head to drop hay. This design was created for multiple species. We had discussed using metal bars to make the retrofit. This had presented many problems. First, it's not as movable for the animal, so the animal's heads and animal's horns can get stuck more easily. Secondly, it requires welding, which makes the retrofit much harder. And thirdly, the metal bars would be more costly than the chains. Using chains to retrofit a ring round bale feeder is not only cost effective, it used most tools that farms have on hand. Tools that we needed to make the retrofit included a vise, hammer, drill, drill bits, hacksaw, bolt cutter, tape measure, and a permanent marker. The supplies we needed to purchase were chain links, eye bolts, and nuts. These are available at most hardware or farm supply stores. The retrofit was easy to implement. So what we did is we measured out our about 16 inches, 16 chain links from here to here by using the tape measure to find that it has a 16 inch gap. Well, so once we figured that out, we took the chain links and we cut the whole chain link at 16 links. We took the eye bolts, we put them apart with the vise, put the chains in there, and put the vise back on together so they would stay secure with the chains.
Then we drilled holes into the feeders where we put our black permanent marker mark for our marks so that we knew it was 16 inches. I don't think we need to tighten it on though. And then, once we had the eye bolts in the feeder, we tightened them up with the nuts to make sure they were firm and secure so that there wouldn't be any issues or problems with the goats or sheep getting their horns stuck. And then once we had the bolts in secured to the nuts, we took the hacksaw and cut off the excess amount so that we wouldn't have any goats getting hurt or sheep or cattle getting injuries from their heads. We made our first prototype, and because the data clearly showed that the amount of hay loss was reduced by 25%, we went ahead and finished the retrofit, creating our second prototype. Hay loss through minimizing head movement with the installation of chains was reduced by 50%, from 120 pounds per 1,200 pound round bale to 60 pounds per 1,200 pound round bale. This slide shows the data from prototype studies. Williamson Farm feeds round bales that weigh 1,200 pounds. They feed goats, sheep, and beef from a ring round feeder. To be able to analyze this data, we average the amount of loss per 1,200 pound bale fed. We collected control data for six weeks and learned that the current feeder had 10% hay loss. When the whole feeder was retrofitted, the loss went down to 5% hay loss. To analyze the data more, we compared our source studies to the university studies that we mentioned earlier. The average ring feeder amongst all the hay waste studies of the university was about 9% of its hay was lost. Our design is well below that with only about a 5% loss of its hay. Okay. If our prototype, Williamson Farm should save 1,560 pounds of hay a year. That's just over one round bale of hay, which equals about $200 in savings. A farmer will not spend more money than he will save. A new feeder would cost Williamson Farm $1,000. The retrofit just costs $68.65. Although a new feeder or building your own sounds pretty, really awesome, in the real world, a retrofit makes the most financial sense. Once we had the data and the investigation complete, we presented our idea to stakeholders. Through four presentations, we shared our idea with 79 4-H'ers, parents, and industry representatives. The group presentation included a West Central Ag Sales Club, which is a group of agriculture instructors and industry representatives in West Central Minnesota. The industry representatives included everything from ag lenders to ag engineers. We also made a video and posted it to social media with 622 views. We were able to get feedback on our design. Based on that feedback, we have begun collecting data on a square bale feeder, and so far it's been similar to the round bale feeder. Throughout this process, we have met with numerous industry representatives, some who have served officially as our mentors. A list of how these people helped with our project is located in our portfolio. They helped us define our problem and provided critical reviews on our project. Although Danelle Williamson was our main mentor, providing reviews and facilitating the building of our prototypes, another mentor that helped was Steve Jan. Steve answered our questions mostly through email. He also did the final critical review of our project. We walked through all of the steps of the, of the project with him. He also observed our final prototype and asked us clarifying questions. As our team worked on our Science of Agriculture Challenge, we became more familiar with the eight-step engineering process and gained skills such as public speaking, creating reviews of literature, and finding credible professional sources of research. We also have used these skills in the past spring in completing projects. Ryan and I will continue to use the engineering process as we work on a Rube Goldberg machine. We are able to implement these skills that we have learned for our Science of Agriculture response project in our everyday lives. A more detailed description of our project and how we use the engineering process and what we learned is included in our portfolio. So the next time you're fed up with hay waste, 
Who are you going to call? The, the Danielson, Danielson Hustlers. Hustlers. Are there any questions? I'm impressed with your ingenuity. Um, what I am wondering about is have, have you reached out to um, manufacturers about maybe patenting or, or selling um, adapting kits? Uh, my name's Ruth Merrick and I'm with the Minnesota Farm Bureau. Uh, Uh, so right now, we haven't really reached out yet to any manufacturers. We are looking to test our prototype on other people's farms. So we've talked to a couple dairy farmers and a couple other beef farmers. So we want to make sure that our data is correct with another person's farm before we go ahead to manufacturers and ask them to patent our prototype. And this past week, we also had a person ask us for, like, because they have a similar round veil feeder to this one, and they asked us for, like, the measurements and something so they can implement it mm -hmm. at their farm. Right. Okay. And uh, in reality, we kind of didn't implement it ourselves, but we just kind of jumped off of uh, another chain design, but this time it was in keyholes. Uh, Mark Hammer, like Minnesota corn growers. Uh, so, in your your uh, waste reduction studies, uh, was that with uh, 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 multiple species? And if so, what uh, what was involved? Uh, it was with multiple species. It was beef cattle, goats, sheep, and a llama. And then also in our portfolio, it kind of breaks down what seasons the animal are used with the round bale feeder. We didn't want to mess the um, Williamson's farm feeding schedule up. So usually the goats are on goats are on the feeder all season, all year round, but they also have access to a pasture in the spring. The sheep are on it in the early spring and in the winter, I believe, too, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then. The beef cattle are only on it for one hour a day in the early spring. So we kind of got to test it more or less with the goats and the ewes, and we did test it with the cattle more in the winter and early spring. I think I'm good. So just to clarify, do you, do you feel as though you got a pretty, uh, uh, how long were you able to do that study? How long did that last? And do you feel as though you got a, a, a pretty complete um, cycle? Then. Okay. Well, basically, on our farm, it showed how much hay lot less we really had. It looked like it was about cut in half, so. And also, so we s collected our baseline data for six, six weeks, and then we did each prototype for four weeks after that. So our first prototype was for four weeks, and our second prototype was another four weeks. And there's more information on depth of like our information in the portfolio as well. So if you're interested in that, uh, it's in the engineering process, I believe. I am curious, uh, again, Ruth Merrick with the Minnesota Farm Bureau, um, how you collected your data on loss. Did you rake it up? How did you measure that loss? So what we basically did is we kind of used the volume method in math where we measured base and the width and the height of how much was lost, and then we calculated our answer by that. And so on our farms, we all did a little different baseline data. We ended up using Daniel's, um, the volume, just because we tested it on his farm. But Daniel went in volume, and then I just kind of observed it, observed mine, just to see how much hay I thought they were losing. And then Ryan used like the height-wise of how much they were losing in the percents. I do have one more question. Please do. Uh, so that question made me think of this one. Uh, was was there uh, any significance in the in the quality of the hay that you're aware of? And and if so, did you notice any difference? I mean, is higher quality hay is there generally less loss? Uh, did that have any effect, or 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 was there really no difference? Mm. Well, with our feeder, I'd say if it's higher quality, then they'd probably end up beating more. <laughs> so, there probably is a difference. 
and we didn't totally test the different types of hay yet. That is another thing that was brought up in our some of the presentations we did to our local egg clubs. So we have decided to try different products in our feeder, such as corn stalks, straw, and like also the different types of hay. And then also in the future, we're looking at using square bales. So like this following year, we're going to test it using square bales and see if the how tight and how loose the bale is determines how much hay waste there is. Okay. Adam Burrow, Minnesota Corn Growers. Do you, uh, so as I understand it, to measure those uh, efficiencies, you use different methods, right? Volume. And you, did you use each of those methods on each of the farms or different methods for each location? Uh, clarification, like the percent and volume, yeah. that part. Yep. Well, we just collected, we collected baseline data on all of ours, but both of our fathers had just gotten new feeders, so they weren't too excited about letting us retrofit our own. <laughs> so we just used Daniel's um, feeder to retrofit, so we kept all of our data in the presentation as well as in our portfolio in the volume that we did with his farm.